Hi there guys, today I'm going to be giving you a quick review on this Carpuroid W901 head unit. It's quite a unique little thing because you can just connect it to the top of your dashboard. You can also set up your own FM audio channel so you can transfer the audio from the head unit to the old car stereo. As well as some other options to connect it to the car speakers. So let's have a look at the unit itself and go over the features you get and then let's test it out. Right, straight out of the box we have the head unit itself as it's on top. It comes in a protective cover, so it is well protected in the box there. Let's just fight it out of this protective cover. It's a high definition display so you can watch videos on it. You can also mirror link it so you can display the screen on your phone. The unit itself is actually pretty good quality. It's very lightweight, so hanging on that mount, it won't cause any issues with too much vibrating and bouncing up and down. Power button, if you give it a long press, it'll turn on and off, and a short press will mute it. Power, which is a DC 12 volts, two and a half amp. A USB cam, so you can have a reverse camera fitted to it. You get an SD card slot, you get the external mic port, which is three and a half millimeter jack. The unit comes with a screen protector on it. There are no air bubbles in it, so you can leave it on to protect the screen if you want to. In the box, you get a sticky mount, so you can attach it to a point in your dashboard more permanently. You know, it is quite adjustable. You can rotate it 360 degrees. You can fold it forwards. You can fold it backwards. You get an adapter mount, so if you fix it somewhere inside your car, you can have a more permanent mount base for it. Now the large mount that it comes with is very versatile, it will extend in and out. You can rotate the cup at the end quite a lot, so you can position it in any way you like. The back of the mount also rotates by 180 degrees. The suction cup is also very large, so it does support the unit very well and there's not much chance of it actually pulling it off the screen. It also comes with a phono cable to 3.5mm jack, so it could be connected to the back of a, a car stereo for example. Also comes with a 12 volt cigarette lighter connector to power up the unit and it also comes with a pretty lengthy cable. And the last item other than the manual which is uh, still in the box is the phono to phono cable which is probably the one you're going to use the most to connect to the car. So let's get this unit attached to the screen now and see how long it actually takes to set up. The suction cup stuck to the screen really easily. I didn't have to reapply it and it's still hanging there now a few days later without any issues whatsoever. Now I've just positioned this anywhere on the screen just for filming purposes. I would probably recommend you fit it low on the dashboard, sort of in the middle of the screen so it's easy to access and it's also uh, out of vision. So what features does it support? It supports Apple CarPlay, which is wireless. It supports Android Auto. It supports AirPlay, so you can play YouTube videos and things like that directly on the unit. It also comes with an equaliser, so you can set it up for different types of music, classic, rock, uh, jazz and things like that. You can also adjust it independently. It also has a load button, so you can increase the amplification volume. Now, just looking in the Bluetooth settings, it's quite straightforward. Just click your device and you can get it to set up that way via your phone and the unit. It's got an SD card slot so you can use your own SD card with loads of MP3 files on there. This is the FM transmitter so you can get the audio from the unit to your head unit using an FM radio station. Let's just have a look through the rest of the settings. You can set the vehicle up so it's left hand or right hand drive. I would assume that would sort of move the volume buttons and things like that to the other sides of the screen. Here's all your settings for Android Auto and all your iPhone settings. And you also can set up a rear view camera on this so you can add parking lines 
and all the different settings for that are here. Here is a test of the boot up time. It took probably eight to 10 seconds, not long at all. Now I'm just gonna test out the volume of the speakers in the unit itself. Now I'm just testing out the screen sensitivity on how fast you can adjust the volume, change tracks and things like that. Just making sure that there isn't tons of delay. And so far so good, it uh, does everything you would expect it to do for this price unit. Just showing you here, for the reverse camera, the setup on it, you can adjust all the grid lines on it, so you can match it perfectly to your shape and size vehicle. Now let's play a video through the system and see how good the picture quality is. I will also be playing the audio through the car speakers to see how that sounds. So there you go, that's just a quick sort of out the box overview of this unit, it is actually quite good and one of the main features I do like about this unit is the fact that you don't have to have it in your dashboard, so if you want to have an original stereo inside your car, you can hook it up via the back and still only have this on at the dashboard when you're doing long journeys, when you want your sat nav, when you want to use Apple CarPlay and things like that, so it does actually come in very handy indeed and it's one unit that um, I will be using myself. If you are interested in buying one of these, there will be a code on the screen and a link in the description below. So thank you guys for watching and I shall see you in the next video.